Welcome back to another episode of the Lunch Table Podcast. I'm Pierce Levis, and I'm joined as always by my lovely co-host, Travis Patrick. And today we have a really good episode for you guys, a really good guest, very interesting one at that. And uh, you got anything to add to that, Travis? Uh, it can get a little stormy in here today, you know? Oh man, that was awful. All right, <laughs> well how would you just go ahead and get the intro for him? All right. T- today we have someone very interesting. Uh, he taught physical education and he coached for many years. And when weather gets bad, he chases tornadoes. Everyone, please welcome Levy Schrock. <laughs> woo! Woo! Fresh from the Royals game. Oh, yeah. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I feel weird. That was my first intro ever. Yeah, I know. What you this is all you, buddy. No, no, you got the. Oh, you got okay. The, Fine. <laughs> go back to normal now. <laughs> How you been? I'm been good. <laughs> so, uh. Give everyone a rundown about yourself, uh, who doesn't know you out there. Yeah, um, I, uh, man, I grew up in Garden City and uh, Creighton area. Um, most of my life, I moved to Tennessee for like three months back when I was in second grade, but uh, came back and kind of stayed around, really. Went to UCM, Longview, and um, go Mules, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> out. Go Mules. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And uh, coached around the Kansas City area and, and eventually ended my coaching career, I guess you could say, back home, full circle. So I went to Sherwood and then coached there. Finished there, yeah. Yep. Nice. Well, uh, are you ready to get into some spicy questions? Uh, bring them on, man. You know what time it is, Travis? You know what time it is. It is five real questions, five real answers with two podcasters and one former coach and teacher. All right, you're switching it up, brother. I you am. switch that up. Go ahead, go ahead and get into the first question. <laughs> All right, you ready to get into the beans? Let's get them. The beans. Question one, what had made you decide to stop teaching? Ooh, so, and let's see. Before I came to Sherwood, I was at a school called Lone Jack. Um, my first three years there was awesome. I mean, we, we had good teams, great families, good parents, and then... The last two years, just a little rougher. Um, we were going through a change in the team, and uh, you know, a lot of parents, or a lot of parents, really loved the change because gave them their team, you know, their kids a shot. But right. um, we had a kid that you know uh, kind of had some trouble. Well, for me, my thing was we need to help this kid out. You know, um, mom and dad are great people, and. Uh, but then a parent, a couple parents didn't really like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it was actually one set of parents, really. And so Sherwood came about, and I was like, you know, my wife's from there too. And um, that came open. We both had a opportunity. They hired us both, and we awesome. got on. So we were like, sweet, you know, we're going back home. Um, we really want to end our career there, yeah. right? Um, full circle, going to school there, then coming back, you know, and do that. Well, uh, my daughter, my oldest daughter, lived with her mom at the time. And in seventh grade, she started playing uh, sports for, you know, the school. Mm-hmm. And her seventh grade year, I, uh, I missed five to seven games, I think. I mm. can't remember exact, but five to seven games because I was teaching and coaching. And I couldn't just leave or I had a game. So I couldn't right. just say, hey, I got to go to my daughter's game. Here's and some not sub coach. notes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Here you go. Um which Isaac and Gretz could have taken care of it just fine. Yeah. Right. But, uh, but yeah, that, that year really hit me hard. Um, one, I was at a little backstory. As a kid, I was always very competitive. And, I mean, you can ask my family. I'd stay up on the couch and mom and dad would go to bed and I'd watch the Bulls. Oh, um, yeah. Because we had six channels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you got to watch the Bulls. They were always on late. And, uh so, but I never, I always had that thing in the back of my head that I wasn't good enough. Mm. Um, as f- from even when I was a little kid, I, I'd excel at something, but I wasn't good enough. You have 10 things positive, one thing bad. Well, you don't remember the 10 things positive. You remember the one thing bad. Mm-hmm. So looking forward <clears throat> here now, one thing bad happened at Lone Jack, you know, a parent, I, I upset a parent, which... If you ever coach, you're never gonna make everybody happy. Right. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because I didn't want to make anybody mad, you know. So missing her games, come back to the front of the story here. Missing her games that hit hard because now I'm spending more time with 
someone else's kids mm-hmm. while my kids competing. So eighth grade year, I figured out my schedule and I scheduled practice. Girls hated it, but scheduled practice at five thirty in the morning. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> but I'd you know I'd be getting up at four four thirty, mm-hmm. going to practice, teaching, and then traveling wherever it was. You know, and she was at Warrensburg at the time, so we would be you know center. Uh, Odessa, Oak Grove, those types of places. And then I wouldn't get home until 10 or 11. Mm-hmm. And next day, I have to go do it all over again. Mm-hmm. So um, so then her eighth grade year, that that year, I was, you know, it wasn't anything to do with my team at all. It, I, I, wanted, I, I honestly thought I'd still be there. Um, but a few things, that, um, and then uh, the AD position came open. Um and I never turned in an application, but I, I had heard that three other people had been asked mm-hmm. if they wanted to be an yeah. AD. So that kind of hit hard. Um, and then I get an email saying, will you be on the AD committee? Uh, you know, yes. I mean, <laughs> right in the heart. <laughs> right there. So, um, you know, after the season was over, I took about two days and I, I went down to uh, Springfield area, uh, where my uncle lived. And I just wanted to talk with him, hash it out, you know, like, Hey, is there anything? Cause I never knew what else I could do besides yeah. teaching. And coaching. Right. That's I've, I've coached basketball of some sort since 2003. Wow. So I was one years old. So was I. <laughs> Holy cow. Right. I mean, my littlest brother chance, his little group, Aaron Shaddox, uh, a kid named Britton Woolery, those kids, mm-hmm. um, they didn't get on uh, Coach Stackhouse's team at the time. That was Austin Nye and all those. Yeah. They just weren't ready for that type of – and so they needed a coach. So Isaac and I were like, we'll do it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, but that's kind of, you know, 13 – it would be 19 years of coaching when I left, and, and then I was on year 14 of teaching. But – I went down there and just hashed it out with him and said, hey, is there anything available? And he goes, well, uh, you know, I didn't think it would be right now, but we could make it happen. So I went home and uh, I had talked to the wife. You right. Know? Yeah. And that was that was a uh, – it was an easier sell than I thought it would be. Right. Moving my family again, right? Yeah. We just got into the Sherwood community again. Was happy. We had a great, you know, place to live in and beautiful house. Yeah, I've never yeah. Seen a picture of yeah, it. it was, yeah. you know, and, and nice piece of property, good neighborhood. Um, and the hard thing was was I was going to take a hit in my paycheck. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, but Cassie saw the, you know, the importance of our our kids. Yeah, right. And. Um, she said yes. And I said okay. So we started looking for a job for her because mm-hmm. um, she was want to stay in teaching. And first interview, bam, she got it. And we just knew from there we made the right decision. Right. Um, so it was very difficult. Uh, um, I didn't want to let my players down um, because I I knew as their you know that that group Sadie's graduating this this year yep. that group mm-hmm. and. And Kennedy and and Lily and them girls Anna, and then last year's group Carson and, and yeah. Becca and and we had a girl named Jaden, but she ended up quitting school. But that group, I, I knew they were going to be good. I knew mm-hmm. they would be competitive. Um, but we had Eldo in our conference or in our yeah. district too all the time. So, but we were, we could be competitive, you know. Right. And and I felt horrible for that, but at the same time, you know, my daughter. I, daughters i had to do it for them so right yeah. so when you talk to cassie about like you know leaving and taking another opportunity when she said yes what was the, was there like oh like was that that was pretty easy or like well, was it a lot of conversation or was it just like yes do no, you, it, like, you know what I mean? it was a lot of conversation leading up to it and i took a couple weeks to really make sure i mean i i had an idea what i was gonna do mm-hmm. and i think she did too but we just wanted to make sure because, I mean, they didn't want us to leave. No yeah, one no. Is, that's sure would want us to leave. And and we didn't plan on leaving. And it wasn't anybody's fault. It was just kind of yeah, got to do happen, it for your family. Right? Right. And, uh, but she was to a point, too, where she's a, 
she wants to be the best. Mm -hmm. She's not going to tell you that. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want anybody. (laughs) She's not going to boast about it. But she wants to be the best teacher there is. And uh, she just knew that maybe it was the right. And just, you know, and I look back. She does a skincare R and F. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Skincare. I've seen and, your nice, beautiful pictures online. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> lips are next, right? I'm going to get these lips up. But, uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, what are the, the, the mask thing? The or mask something? Thing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think what, and, and what she came out and told everybody as well, too, was in 2000, I think it was 17 or 18 when she started that, I said, why not? Let's do it for a year. I don't know. Well, that year turned into she's still doing it. Nice. But we gave each other an opportunity, and so it's worked out. It's That's been awesome. a blessing. Yep, been a blessing. Uh, do you ever regret? Like, do you like? Do you have like kind of regrets? Like, you know, maybe you could have taught instead of like stop coaching or just taught, or did you just you just really happy overall with your decision? Yeah. Um. So we're not supposed to say this as educators, but. I only taught because I wanted to coach. Right. You know, and, and I knew that was my end. I wasn't, I yeah. didn't, I messed up. I didn't go do the college route uh, mm. sports wise. I could have. Yeah. I had opportunities. I was recruited by, uh, at the time, it was, uh, uh, what's his name from Creighton, the coach up there. He was at Northern Iowa. Oh, mm. yeah. And, I was I was being recruited by them, but back then you had to send in VHS tapes. Yeah. So it wasn't automatic, Game you film, know. Yeah. Um, well, I we got in and uh, <laughs> I was almost there, and a kid I don't remember his name, but he they he wanted he ended up transferring. That's before this whole transfer portal mm-hmm. was out of whack. Well, he ended up transferring from Minnesota, Oof. and that kid was six seven, and here I am five nine. And he led him to the NCAA tournament that next year. Uh, so, at the time, I was like, "Well, I'm done." You know, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> do it. You know, uh, but um, you know, I don't know if there's ever any regret or or anything. I don't really like to live with regret. You make decisions, right. you know, yeah. um, good or bad. Everybody makes a stupid decision at some point. But um, I think. Uh, I think now looking back, I'm glad I did it. Um, and basically the reason why is, yes, I could have taught and probably not get away or get away from coaching a little bit. At Sherwood, I don't think I could have. Right. Because there yeah. are limited so many. Co- I mean, there's not very many coaches. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And as a PE teacher, that's another hard thing. They usually want you to coach some sport. Right. Whether Whatever sport that may be. Usually I got lucked out and only had to do one. Most of the time at a school like Sherwood or Smaller, you're doing two or three. Well, I remember Steinoff, he did all, yep. them all. Mm-hmm. Yep. And when I first started in teaching and coaching, too, um, I did all of them. I mean, I mm-hmm. did football, and, but I didn't have a family. Yeah. Um, right. So, but then on the opposite side, I, I know it's not about money, mm-hmm. but right now our society is awful. You go to a grocery store, you can't buy anything unless you have a good amount of money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, we struggled for a year, you know, but we're getting up there now, but teaching, I was capped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, now the sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. I can make as much money as I want if I want to. Right. So not that that's the end all be all, but right now it's a big thing. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, money's always ran everything, but now with this economy going to crap, I mean, you you got, you got, you got that money. (laughs) You have to have a a good amount of money too. They used to say that a family of four, you need between all four of you, and usually it's just the parents, but mm-hmm. all four, about one hundred twenty-five thousand, would live comfortably. Yeah, you know what that is now? It's over two hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars for a family of four to live comfortably. Yeah, it's crazy. Over two hundred, and I don't. We don't even make what it used to be. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like so, we're not living comfortable. I guess. Yeah, yeah I guess not. So. That's crazy. Well. That was a really good topic, Travis. You nailed these questions today. Thank you. You did a great job. Thank I'm really you. proud of you. You did. I did indeed. <laughs> All right. So our next question for you is uh, growing up in the short community, like you talked about, uh, what has been the biggest impact you've had from this community? Well, I, I, you know, 
I think uh, you had Bradford on a couple weeks ago, maybe. Mm-hmm. But uh, one thing she said was kind of how the it's kind of a family oriented thing. Yeah. So piggybacking off of that, that's good and bad, right? Right. Mm-hmm. You go to a, a small school, everybody knows you. So every mm-hmm. mistake that you make, every great thing that you do, they all know, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, you go to a big school and who? You know, yeah. Like, right. What happened? That guy graduated with me? Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, um, but uh, when I was in school, I had a coach. Um, uh, there's a couple coaches, but um, I didn't get to have the one for very long because he moved to Carl Junction. And I was mm-hmm. Coach Carter. Um Coach Carter passed away a few years back here, and really sad. I, I only got him for for one little PE stint, you know. But mm-hmm. he would have been a guy that you know you looked up to. Mm-hmm. Well, after him was Coach Long, uh, Jeff Long, and yeah. um, that guy. Um, and I still talk to him this to this day, you know. But that guy was a teacher coach that he treated you like a person. Right? Right. It, you just weren't some student, you were a person, and he inspired me to to do things that you know maybe maybe I couldn't do or I just didn't want to do right. Right. But he he taught he he taught me as a or taught his kids as they were people, and uh, Coach Jewel he was a big old guy um, York Jewel um, when I was in junior high, uh, you know he always pushed me and everything, but. On the flip side of that, he was one of the ones that made me probably one of the maddest I've ever been at a coach in seventh grade because I was all right at basketball. Mm -hmm. That was my, I I mean, I played basketball my whole life. Well, he decided he needed to start all eighth graders, and there was just one eighth grader that I, awful, (laughs) awful. Yeah. But he was, and I never got the point of that to this day, but. Once I started coaching, I was like, I see why he did it, you know. Mm -hmm. But it made me work harder, right? Mm -hmm. But again, like I said in the beginning, there's that notch that I'm not good enough. Too small. Um, So coaches coaches there at the school, at a small school like that, really, you know, for me, because I was an athlete. That was was what I did. I wasn't – I didn't do anything else. Right. So those were the biggest influence. But then, not so much today, but back then – we had crowds yeah. at our games. Mm-hmm. We got we made national news. I think it was my sophomore year. The Creighton Crazies. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, uh, take they painted all along the line there at Butler, um, and that still eats at me because that year, if we would have beat Butler, we lost by two. But if we would have beat Butler, they went on and got second state that year. And you know, you know <laughs> would we have been there? I don't know, but. Yeah, uh, you know, been nice. Freaking know. Butler, you know, uh, but <laughs> you know, but we used to have crowds. I mean, we yeah. pull crowds, and and that's fun because smaller gym, crowds are on you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so those are probably the biggest things as a smaller community there. For sure. Up, so well, then we started that back up my senior year. We talked about it with Jana when we the the hype squad. Mm-hmm. We were packing that gym every night for girls and boys. Mm-hmm. That. Yeah, because people were saying like, you know, this was what the Creighton Crazies were like. Because mm-hmm. I remember hearing that all the time. Like, this is just giving me so much throwback to right. how it used to be. And then after we left, I guess it hasn't been the same, which well, sucks. I wish you it would have. Should because... see the, see it now. Yeah. It's, well, it's and, actually and sad. Even when I was coaching there, I mean, you look over and be like, oh, how do you, you know? Mm. And some of the kids over there, like, mainly you have middle school or elementary kids, mm-hmm. which is good. I mean, they mm. need to be there too because. You all, as players and uh, upperclassmen at that time, uh, and then you know upperclassmen here, they look up to you. Right. Mm-hmm. You know they want to be the next whatever. You know, and and I remember when I was playing. Um, once I figured that out, it's like, man, you know, these kids are here to watch watch us. Right. You know what I mean? Um, so that you know, it's just it's sad, but it's it's across the board. I mean, mm-hmm. you can't even hardly get teams anymore. I mean, yeah, you look at it, and I know sure what's going through it right now with the girls' program on the basketball side, you know. Um, but it's everywhere. It's not right. Mount Vernon is a bigger school than yeah. Sherwood, and they had to cancel their girls' basketball season two years ago. Wow, they wow. didn't have enough. You know, so. that's crazy. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> no, that. I remember showing up to the girls' games, and I just love seeing, like, honestly, my favorite person 
to get like fired up was Grace Parrott. <laughs> we gets... hyping her up because she, you know, she's oh, in yeah. it. She is. Grace was one of those. She was the hardest playing. One of the. I mean, my opinion, she was the hardest playing girl out there. Every every game. So, I feel so like. So funny story about Grace. Oh heck, her yeah. senior year. <clears throat> She didn't think I, – I don't know if she just didn't think I liked her or what, but I loved her effort and attitude, always. Yeah. Well, she gets so mad. Mm-hmm. And finally I figured it out, okay, here's what I need to do with her, you know. Well, she got mad one game, and, and I pulled her out. And I, I don't know if somebody said something or if I was talking to somebody else, but she turned to me and said, shut up. <laughs> I'm like, I look back at Gretz and you know how Gretz yeah. is. She, she goes, and Isaac's like, <laughs> shut up. Man. And, and I looked at the girls on the bench. I go, did she just tell me shut up? <laughs> yeah. I go, okay. So now I'm, I'm trying to coach a game. And I'm like, what in the world? Why did you tell me to shut up? Right. You know, but you know, I didn't never hate her. Uh, had she did some. You know, she was in trouble for it, but, um, <laughs> but you can't take away that fire, you know, yeah. no. you can't, in the call, moment. but at the same time, we had to figure out how to stem that to a pod, like take that fire you got and put it into a positive, mm-hmm. you know, how can you go out there and do something great, right. you know, don't just get mad at yourself and then make five mistakes in a row. Mm-hmm. You know? So yes, yeah, she that was fun. So. Those the, that girls team was really fun to watch. <laughs> Honestly, there was it so was. much attitude on the oh court. My gosh. Her Kelsey, I think, did Sam play? Sam played. Sam Kennedy. Kennedy. Kennedy was, Kennedy. Always, <laughs> Kennedy was always mad at me because Kennedy. I tried to get her to to have that role player option, and of course, I mean, look at her family though. You know, everybody expected to be great. Yeah. You know, and. And I wasn't saying that she wasn't good or bad or anything like that. It was just, hey, I need you to do this. This is your. We need to get this job figured out. And she'd get mad at me because I'd started underclassmen over a <laughs> man, and but then she'd go out and hit a couple threes. I'm like, this is what I want, <laughs> right? You know. And but yeah, that group that was a fun. It was, they were tough. <laughs> yeah. But I think if I would have had them for more than just two years, mm-hmm. we could have grew a little bit better, you know, and. Their, their record didn't show it, but they really did care. Right. You know, you know, they did care. It just, they didn't, I mean, it seemed, and I, being a coach, you don't really like to say this, but I feel like every team of that year had their best players they've had. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, we stacked up against every great, because after they left, this team started going down. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so we were the prime Sherwood athletes. Travis is what he's saying. I don't know. I heard a lot of stories about uh, old Schrock back in his days. Um, he was he was like the pimp out on the court. He um, was on and off. I feel like I heard he was like. <laughs> <laughs> I heard he was like. They, they call you Slim Shady. They ever give you that nickname? I, I was Slim Shady for a minute. Yeah, I, I heard. I, of, I heard about that. That was when I ran track, though. Oh, okay. I dyed my hair blonde. Oh, okay. okay, that makes I ran sense. Ran track my freshman sophomore year and. Uh, 400 so Stackhouse was our coach Bill yep and I never hated Stack but I hated him because he wouldn't listen to me mm-hmm. and at that point in my life my knees were I was growing I grew too much that it wasn't Osgood Slaughter's but my knees were killing me yeah. he had he knew I was the only one that I think he knew he may tell you differently but I ran the 400 mm-hmm. 4 by 4 800 4 by 8 every Jeez. race every every meet Jeez. and I'd tick people off because I'd, you know, especially midway guy, Jeremy Wardlow, I can remember he'd F-bomb me every time I passed him on the last lap. But um, <laughs> that year we dyed our hair all blonde, and we were ranked we were ranked third in our in the state. Wow. And we get to state, and Kyle Turner leads off, and here we all are with all our Q-tip hair, you know. <laughs> and he runs a great one, like 52, I think, 51, 52 split great we're we're right there and then we had uh john grant and eric beasley and they crapped their pants oh no ran their worst race ever so here i am i'm in the back now eight eighth and the seventh place guy is a good 75 yards ahead of me oh and i just take off right i'm not i lost i mean we, we got eighth we still made all state but man i i, I flew 
And I think they said my split was around 49-something. Oh. But it's a split, so you can't ever really know yeah. for sure. Right. But I got done, went over, and just started vomiting. Uh. I, I was like, it's a bad deal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, literally, right to the to the field. But that's when we were on the old track. It wasn't the new The track. gravel track? No. It, they had, it was over at State. Oh, State. I see. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, we, we Slim Shady, you know, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you don't want you don't want to dye your hair and go by that again. I mean, I was cool, especially when it grew out and you know it looked. You cut it the first time, and all, then you had little highlights in there. Oh, yeah. You looked now. Like, I can't do it. I'm bald. Like Justin Timberlake. No, well, that was frosted yeah, tips, wasn't it? That was frosted, yeah. but okay. it looked like it was frosted. Okay. Could I had black hair and then yeah, yeah. If you can find some old pictures on that. I had I wore the old hemp necklace. Remember the old oh, hemp, yeah. hemp bead necklaces? <laughs> wore that with my frost. Yeah. Oh yeah, you <laughs> were him. It was sweet. <laughs> Pulling all the women. <laughs> <laughs> no. So uh uh question three. What had made you become a coach? So when I was younger I always wanted to um do something with the weather, right? But then when I got a little older, my uncle, uh, Wally Schrock, he was kind of my idol, right? I mean, um, I always wanted to, uh, you know, in basketball, I wanted to beat his, his scoring that he had up there. And um, I didn't play football when I got older. I, I look back now and I, I wonder what I could have been like in football. Mm-hmm. Same. <laughs> um, but, you know, but at the same time, did it save me from getting injured? Because I was – I was basketball, but uh, so I idolized him, and so really I wanted to be what he was being. He was going to city planning and stuff, so developing towns and cities and everything. So I thought that's what I was going to go do. And then, um, you know, my littlest brother Chance, they were in fourth grade, and they didn't have a coach for their little team. And um, my brother Isaac and I were like, okay, we'll do it, you know. And so when we did that, um, I was like. That's kind of fun, you know. I can't play. I could have played, but I'm not playing anymore, so how can I stay with sports? Um, well, coaching was a good outlet. So um, that year we were very successful. Uh, I, th- I think we got second in the, you know, the little, little, the little league, league tournament, you yeah. know. Um, but, you know, at that point the parents were like, man, thank you, you know, got – God, Isaac and I a plaque at the end. You know, it's like this wow. is cool. You know, so at that point, that's where I was like, okay, I want to. I think I want to coach, um, and and um, but I didn't know anything else at that point. I didn't know how to really coach. I just did what I was taught. Mm-hmm. You know, by my coaches. Um, but that kind of that was the the year that I was like, okay. So then I flipped over and I finished uh, uh, that year at Central, but then I. Uh, transferred back to Longview to try to get my gen eds because I wasn't very good at taking tests. Yeah. In high school, I'm, I'm glad I'm out now. It's been a long time, but every way I could, I cheated. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> every way I could. I didn't, it, Same, it could be I feel the that. smart guy sitting on the, or smart, weird girl, you know. <laughs> you, know but oh, it, you look beautiful yeah, today. Yeah. I, I remember. <laughs> Chris Davison, I don't know if you know Chris Davison, Cheryl that used to be lunch yes, lady, yes, oh, yeah, yeah. her son, that was one of my best friends in, in school, and our senior year, we took uh, basic business, right, it was a freshman level class, so Chris and I sat by Cammie Morris, or Cammie Smith now, uh-huh. oh, yeah. and, and Amy Ayler, uh, I can't remember who she's married to. But those two girls were the smartest ones, so we sat by them and <laughs> copied off them for a freshman level. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we used our resources wisely. Yeah. Okay? I guess you don't call it cheating. You just use resources. resources. Yeah. Yeah. And back then, we didn't, get, we didn't have phones like this, so we couldn't sneak a phone or anything. You had to write on your arms. Uh-huh. I, I remember uh, one test I had flip-flops on, and I put it in my binder and Flipped it with my toes to. That's so smart. <laughs> That's so smart. I will say I've never, never told. I, I probably told my buddies about this a long time ago. I was taking a math test. I wasn't ever too great at math to start out with, but as soon as I got into high school and was doing more math classes that were required, I started liking it more. I was actually going to become a math teacher in college and come back to Sherwood and do it all. But then I, because I wanted to coach, mm-hmm. but. 
everything, it all changed. I ended up going that route and dropped out. But I do remember one time I bombed this test. And the te- I'm not going to say the teacher's name because I'm sure she watches this. <laughs> but uh, I bombed it. She let me retake it. I had to go and do some study sessions with her. I was lost. I still had no idea what I was <clears> doing. But she gave me the answers to the test, like on the study review that we had to do. And like we went through them, worked on the problems. I couldn't remember anything. And I remember I wrote it all down on a sticky note. And I put it on the back of my calculator because I had a little cover. So I slid off my cover to mm-hmm. to type on it. I'd slide the cover up behind it. Been there, done that. <laughs> I'd yeah. do that. And uh, I think I got 100 on that test. I think you kept that sticky note back there because you showed us I did. at lunch. But I feel like it was there for a long time after that. <laughs> One time in Don Ball's class, I, I heard this test was really hard for that. It was like that. That test that really mattered to like pass. The government like, test. Yeah, yeah, the, the government test. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the like, preamble and yeah. stuff, all that stuff. Yeah. I remember I was, I was writing stuff down on paper to a little study guide <laughs> that we weren't supposed to have in class. I, I wrote some fine print. Like, I could barely read it, but I, like, I, I knew what I wrote down. <laughs> I took it when I was done with it. I put it in my mouth and chewed up like a piece of gum. <laughs> and he probably went and said, Spit out your gum. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I've, done, I've done some crazy stuff. I didn't really cheat on this test, but I failed a test in a specific class. I'm not going to name that because we had this person on. But uh, I had to go and retake it. So I was doing the same thing, going to study sessions and whatnot. And I, like I said, I was doing that every morning, study sessions and whatnot. And then I went to the test, didn't remember anything. I, I would look at the question. I'd look at her and she'd be like, what are you stuck on? And I'm like, uh, this one. She, she goes, what do you think it is? And I'm like, <laughs> I think it's this. And she goes, I think it's B. And she was like, I'm like <laughs> so I wasn't really cheating. It was using my resources. Yeah. And she wanted to help me out. So. <laughs> Sorry, they wanted to help me out. <laughs> I'm not going to say any names, but <laughs> shout out you. <laughs> so one thing that Bradford, I watched the Bradford one. Mm-hmm. And one thing she didn't tell you about was when she was teaching me, right, our, our grade, she fell flat on her face. She tripped in class. It was the most hilarious thing we've ever seen. In life. <laughs> and she and I'm, she still remembers it. I know if you if you'd asked her, she but yeah, Dang. hilarious. And but I loved her ever since. You know, she's awesome. <laughs> she's so awesome. <laughs> she's so goofy too. That's what made it so fun is that she was just she was just having fun with it. Yeah, like, but <laughs> Oh my gosh! I I was driving. You know, when I listened to that, I actually listened to that one on Friday. And I was going home from the Royals game. And I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> because, you know, I'm sitting there and you start saying it. But then I look down. Well, then it's a delay because it's hooked up through my truck. Yeah. I'm like, they're not even laughing. And then I'm trying to figure out, okay. And then you keep saying, I'm like, so I start saying it. Pock the kind of yod. <laughs> As I'm driving. <laughs> One, it's late. You know, I'm tired. Right. But I'm dying laughing. I <laughs> I couldn't. I'm just sitting there, like, oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. No, I, I've kept that secret for a long time. <laughs> I've regretted showing my face at that school ever since, or even walking in the library again because of that. That was. Uh, you could have pulled it off. No, I couldn't. Have. <laughs> they they would have gave me one line. It would have been pock the con in the yard. Like, oh my you could, gosh. You could have been the soup guy or something. You know, you know like <laughs> Seinfeld. He texted me that today, too. He's like, I'll let you know I'm on my way. I'll just pock my car in the yard. <laughs> I, I was at graduation. I was like, oh, my gosh, this guy. <laughs> and then Jaden's brother, her little youngest brother, she sent me a video. And the, he's just saying it over and over again. She's like, he won't stop he saying won't pock st- the car in the yard. It's, it's one of those things that, you know, like the earworm or whatever uh-huh. on SpongeBob. It's that same thing. Yeah. You just can't stop saying it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's a that's a clip for TikTok later. <laughs> All right. So uh, coming off the teacher topic, what made you start uh, chasing tornadoes? Oh, yeah. It's very interesting. So I think I said back, you know, when I was a young kid, I, was, I always wanted to be a weatherman or mm-hmm. something. Something to do with weather. Didn't really know. And it came about because my dad would always be like, how do you, like, I'd be like, man, it's going to rain today. It'd be like this. Mm-hmm. And he'll be like, it ain't going to rain today. Sure enough, there comes a storm. You know, just something <laughs> weird like that. And But I just, it. I've always been interested in how weather 
is like right. what is it yeah you know, how does it just do this or you know everybody gets mad at the weather guys because they say one thing and then it does a different mm-hmm. one but that's how weather is it's unpredictable it's weird but now they're kind of saying okay well in this time period you might get a storm or this time period mm-hmm. it might be a you know a snowstorm or rain storm. I mean, they can do that now yeah. almost up to like six months i think now that's crazy so you could literally sit there and, and ask what's this day going to be like in august and they'll say well around this time period something's going to happen huh. that's crazy and so anyways uh my brother and i we he was down i can't remember where he was but i was up here at my dad's house in 2011 and that's when i think it was 2011 joplin tornado went through oh yeah okay and i was i was watching it like live on the tv they were showing it and i was texting my dad because there was actually another tornado out towards topeka and he was at the drag races so mm-hmm. i was texting him, hey just be careful watch that storm you know whatever um but uh after that isaac and i went to a storm session thing there cass county was holding it and just to kind of see what it was about well when they started talking we're sitting there like we already know this like this isn't rocket science you know right. it's the basic stuff right um so then we just one day said let's go chase let's go chase one well so we didn't have all the stuff that he has now we just kind of had a phone i think i think he had a computer or a laptop maybe the maybe he did purchase at some point the the stuff for it but um we went out and awesome. and then we saw one like we actually saw a tornado and it's one of those things it's a catch-22 because you want to see it right that's what you went out for mm-hmm. but then who's in the path yeah well that tornado was and we went, we didn't see it like you know oh there's the perfect funnel it was the one that hit over by lawrence a few years back bonner springs area mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. wiped out this town and but we were on K seven, and could hear it, and we saw the debris. We, and it's on our. We have a you know we have a YouTube account, mm-hmm. Nader Boys. You mm-hmm. can go and look or Facebook, and it's We're on right there. Here. Yep, it's on there, and you can see where it's at. I mean, it was huge, mile wide tornado. It's awesome. Um, and but the downside to it is we did drive where that path was, and there's houses blown up. You know. Um, people crying, trying to figure out picking up stuff. I mean, you think about how much, like, over time you collect in your in your household, family pictures, those mm-hmm. types, and all that's gone. Yeah. yeah. So that side of it sucks. It yeah. really does. Um, so you hope that it goes in a field. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyways, we saw that one, and then we're like, man, this is, it's actually pretty cool, you know? Very dangerous, because mm-hmm. you don't know. Um, so... We decided, well, we'll go out every now and then. We'll see. And so this year, so that was like six, seven, eight years ago when we, whenever that was. But this year, the guy that works at that year at Auto Parts store down there used to be yeah. Randy Boat. Oh, yeah. Fenway. Yeah. Yeah. So um, his name's Jim Sublet, mm-hmm. and he's a weather. Like, he is weather. He's on it. <laughs> he is on it. He, he actually, that's what he was going to school for. Then he. Uh, switched over to criminal justice i think but he mm-hmm. went to ucm but he's got four or five i guess different uh computers in his house and it's like as many weather station wow. right well somehow isaac was got a hold of him and we merged with him this year that's awesome so um basically and and a guy named reed timmer he's yeah. professional reed his guy does it it theirs is really good but they have a guy sitting at Peter mm-hmm. at home or wherever and they're you know he's doing the all the stuff and then they're they're out chasing mm-hmm. well, that's essentially what we're doing now okay and uh it's been awesome because he'll text us and and like he texts us actually is this morning or last night or this morning you guys going out today because out in kansas there's some storms happening mm-hmm. well i was busy i couldn't and and that's been kind of the theme of this year i've with sports and stuff. Right. Yeah. Or it happens after dark and we try not to go out after dark. Yeah. Um, That'd be scary. It, it's, yeah. it's hard. But, uh, anyways, we just, I mean, it's, 
the drives are long, but we try to make them, you know, interesting. We try to get out there earlier so we can make sure we're going to the right path. But right. we're no, we're not professionals by any means. We, yeah. But we, Isaac has the stuff on the computer. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of try to get us to locations as fast as we can. But honestly, guys, probably 95 to 99% of the time, we are on the right storm. It just doesn't always have the right, the last ingredient to yeah. touch. We're, we're right there. And that's made us kind of feel pretty good because we're actually getting it. You're tracking you know? it. Yeah, yeah. You're getting it. And, you know, they kind of rely on people like us to get the news out real quick because on radar, you can see maybe one or maybe not. But like those storms that last week, there was from – top of missouri all the way down to mm-hmm. oklahoma mm-hmm. tornado warnings yeah. yeah well that's because the little ones were spinning up you yeah know? so it after you see one you'll understand but until you see one you're like well this is you know like luke's only went out one time <laughs> <laughs> don't let luke fool you um but he does i mean and when we don't go out with him our gas mileage is a lot better because <laughs> he is one rather large dude sitting in a ford escape <laughs> and he has to sit. I mean, he he's in the big. middle. He, he no, he has to sit in the front. Oh, he can't sit in the back. <laughs> Too big. That guy is a monster. Bear. <laughs> the big bear. bear. Oh big my bear. gosh, he's a monster. But uh, we have pictures. Um, we he went with us when we went to Iowa one time, and we saw an awesome storm. It just didn't produce. Just mm. didn't produce the tornado. But speaking of the uh, that Joplin storm back in uh, 2011 or whenever it was. Uh, they, so where I work now in the union as an operator, my boss, shout out Bob, he's a really cool dude. Uh, he actually did a the rescue like a rescue cleanup mission out mm-hmm. there with I believe the the one on one like they got sent out there and he was in the excavators cleaning up the the mess that that right. that huge tornado was wiped out Joplin thousands yeah. of people that mm-hmm. came yeah in. and he he said he he seen he I mean it's just <clears throat> very sad to see like mm-hmm. all the stuff and people not knowing where other people were and right. whether they might be crushed under this house yeah. and dead or <laughs> even alive and crushed in the well, house and it's funny you say that you know alive and crushed but um so when i took my master's class i went through william woods but we had a cohort over at rockhurst university or rockhurst high school sorry yeah. and there was there's was one lady in our class which you know that's crazy there was only one lady in all you know we had like 15 people in that cohort but uh she was in it and she told us that when it storms she can't sleep if it's storm at night she can't sleep and mm. now this was back in you know 13 12 13 because mm. so it's fresh right i'm sure she's probably gotten a little bit better now yeah. but and i don't know where she's at or you know i just knew her from class but she said that she was in her bathtub with the mattress on and the wall fell on her and if that wall wouldn't have fell down she didn't know what could have happened. Yeah, you know what I mean? Scary. Yeah. Like that wall did save her. Yeah. You know, but I mean, can you, you think That's about crazy. that? Just like that, you could have been. <laughs> what uh? What category was that? I think that was five, wasn't it? That I was the it, biggest. Wasn't it the it biggest was, one? It was one of the biggest ones. Yeah. yeah. Man. Um. So, I learned this year that how they kind of calculate that. Mm-hmm. And if you could have one of the biggest ones out in the open field, but then tear anything up, so you don't know. Right? Yeah. So you have to have you have to have stuff tore up to see. Yeah. You know? Okay. So it's again sad. Yeah. Right. That's somebody's property, but that's how they figure out how Man. how big it was. So from a young age, for me, I've always been. So I was always scared of storms. I hated them, but my dad started taking me to school day at the K. I met Reed, Tim- Reed Timmer there, mm-hmm. saw the first Dominator, which yep. was freaking awesome, by the way. What, but met him there, and he did his whole show, whatever, talking about it, gave us all, everyone DVDs. Mm-hmm. I would watch those things all the time, yep. and I've been so fascinated with it. Like, I still watch Reed, and like, you know, and just how he knows where to go and all the yep. science that really goes into it. So he, he's one that people either love him or hate him. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, funny story about Reed. Last year, Isaac and I went up, and we were up by Quincy, uh, Illinois. There. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and so you don't 
the hard thing is you don't you can't you shouldn't follow them because there's so many storm chasers now mm-hmm. once you start i mean and they need to get out quick i mean you can't just lollygag around when you're chasing you have to be able to have pass and everything yeah. and but he passed right in front of us and we're like <laughs> yeah <laughs> so he pulls off the side i mean we were on the same storm and he pulls off on the exit ramp there or on ramp you know mm-hmm. and he gets out and we just kind of pull up nonchalant you know and uh he's going down taking a leak you know <coughs> i'm like oh man do we do we say something you know to isaac can't I'm like, pee there <laughs> <laughs> and so anyways i was like well, i'm gonna pull in front of him so they have to see us right well they're filming and everything yeah he comes up, I get out. I'm like, I got to meet him. You know, I get out, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, my Fair eyes are like, this. yeah, right. You know, here I am, 39 years old at this time. I'm like, oh, I got to meet this dude, you know. <laughs> Not thinking what he just did. Uh, he just took a leak, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, more than likely, he, shook, he, shook he had to, hand, I, he called it his acorn, and I had shook his hand, and then afterwards, I'm like, he just, he just went pee, Isaac. That's a signature that goes a long way. Hey, that, you know, <laughs> to this day, I haven't, I haven't watched oh, it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so is this this the, the guy that drives around with, like, that He's armored got, car? You know the Nope yeah, video? That's yes. That's him. Okay, that's so Reed. speaking of that, a uh, few weeks back, whenever people spot him in Kansas City mm-hmm. and taking pictures of all mm-hmm. his car and whatnot, I was heading home from work, and that's when all those – like super bad storm was coming through i was like mm-hmm. man some shit's about to go down so he was passing through and he went up there that omaha one mm-hmm. yeah 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 that one that his stuff is just so cool like when yeah. when he built i think it's dominator three now mm-hmm. it is the coolest and like the the thought process he went through it is like you know like it'll lower itself it'll lower the forks into the ground and he still told them there's still a chance this tornado can get under us and let this yeah. flip us over yeah. but like it's just he, he's a really cool dude like, yeah, just to yeah. watch and he's goofy as hell oh yeah he makes noises when he's in there <laughs> he uh, freaks out he freaks out you start, you're like what happened you everyone know? stay calm <laughs> and he's the one freaking out oh he's so but cool but that that's where people either love him or hate him you know cause yeah. some of that people get kinda like it's adrenaline uh, yeah like do you ever uh, do you ever plan on getting to like that guy kind of like getting the equipment are you gonna build a dominator no game? we'll we'll take it so I don't need a dominator because we got Isaac's escape right now, and that thing can go eighty in a ditch. <laughs> so I'll tell you a story about that later. But uh, yeah, we don't need no dominator. We just go through ditches, right? If you have Luke in the back, the tornado <laughs> like, has Luke, Luke will just pick us up and move us. <laughs> but yeah, we, no, it, it, you know that that takes a lot of time. I yeah, mean, that's that's his job. Yeah, I mean daily. He's and and a lot of money. I mean Isaac and I do it, but. This year, we since we teamed up with this, uh, it's actually Subby's Weather Talk is what he has. Yeah. I mean, he has all kinds of YouTube, I mean, all of them, all the social media. But um, he's finally said, hey, why don't you try to, you know, and you guys are doing the same thing, donations. Yeah. Because you know, it, it's not cheap not, to yeah, drive not a car. Cheap. And gas um, prices and everything. We, and we've had a few donations, but, you know, that's something that if people could – but we need more content, you know. You yeah, gotta right. get to that stuff. You got to make it interesting, or people, and just like you guys, you can't just come in here and boom, and people expect people to watch right. it, and, yeah, and help you guys out, you know. So right. it would be cool, but I don't think we'll ever be that like that. It, it's yeah. just it's it's fun for us, you know. Yeah. That would be I, th- I think that would be more of a stressor on us because yeah. You're, you have to go out. You have to find a storm. You, you have, have to give, some you have to give great content. And, and you the have, winter's a dead month for that. Yep. And he goes down and he does other, you know, he'll chase hurricanes. If yeah. Kind of, you know, but, oh, um, but yeah, that's, I mean, it's just, I don't know how much money he makes, but he's got to make a ton. Oh, yeah. He's oh, for sure. Make a ton. And, and we never thought about it, but like, you know, you post something on a website or a Facebook account or something. Well, if you don't have it, like watermarked or ink, somebody can take that and go sell it. Yeah. yeah. We never have thought about that. You know, like, yeah. what? And that guy told us, you need to make sure if you're posting stuff, somehow find a watermark or something on there so no one can sell your stuff and then you can. Right. We're like, we never even thought about selling content because yeah. we right. have tornadoes, you know. Right. We never, <laughs> what? <laughs> we can do that? So, 
I didn't even know we could do that. <laughs> yeah, I I know a lot of uh, I've watched a lot of YouTubers, and that's a that's a big issue with like all this like technology and AIs and stuff. People are just literally taking their videos off like their YouTube channel and splicing it into something else and making a name for them, and it's posting all their content. Mm -hmm. yep. And now they can't make money because they can't actually get verified through their account because right. this account over here has already got verified. That's the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's crazy. All right, Travis, last question. <clears throat> All right. This is going to get a little scary here, hopefully. Uh -oh. Tell us about hopefully. your scariest encounter with chasing tornadoes. <laughs> so, 80 mile an hour in the in the uh, ditch, okay? All right. <laughs> so, Isaac and I went out, and uh, we're out middle of Kansas, kind of, okay, you know where Manhattan, Fort Riley is? Yep. Mm -hmm. So, just south of there. And west of Emporia. Mm -hmm. And we get out there and um, it had been a, I mean, it was later in the day. Probably, it, you know, it wasn't dark by any means, but it was later in the day. We'd been out all day. And we stop and pull over and we're watching the storm. And if you look way, I mean, Kansas is pretty flat. This yeah. was just on the other side, kind of the Flint Hills area. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's kind of starting to get flat again. And we're, I'm like... Look way, I mean, it's way down there. I'm like, is that a like, is that a microburst happening? Because it just, I mean, it looked like it was just going out. So not, th well, then up here, here comes a little. I'm like, well, here's a tornado right here. <laughs> you know, we're holy crap, or it's funnel. It's not technically a tornado until it touches, mm -hmm. brings up. But so a funnel is forming right here, way down there. So we're sitting there, and one thing that we try to do the most, Reed does it. Reed. Pfft, plows right through everything he wants the hail hit him and yeah but we we can't afford to fix cars yeah, that's your person right, vehicle, right? Yeah. so you always want to be on technically on the southeast side of the storm so we're up here and this you know the funnel's coming here and uh it's kind of a linear storm and then i would say as the crow flies it's 10 miles away yeah right um maybe even farther but so we decide well Let's get south where we came from, um, and that way we can get this. If that if that's anything, we'll get that. Well, as we're starting to look at the, that's a tornado. That's not a microburst happening. It's a tornado forming, right? Uh -huh. And so we get going, and we're we're hauling butt, man. We're trying to get down there, and it's on our video. It's one of our videos. But Isaac is smart enough because he knew our family was watching. Uh huh. He acted like we lost service, but we really didn't lose service. <laughs> we were scared. To, I mean, we were scared. Yeah. Because, so we're traveling south, and the storm's coming. Well, where that thing was happening down there, so what happened with this storm, and this is why it's so unpredictable at times, it was us and about, I think I read nine or ten other chasers. Uh -huh. And some of them were big name chasers. It wasn't right. just people like us going right. out and having fun and doing it. So we're driving, and this thing starts, it starts whipping. So the storm starts, and so it speeds up, Yeah. right? So it's just like you crack a whip, that end of the whip's coming around. And I say, Isaac, are we going to, we all right? Yeah, just, well, my map says straight, and then we're going to get our road two miles. Oh, we'll be all right then. So we're, I mean, we're hauling, we can see it. And, and so there's different types of winds that happen in a tornado. Uh-huh. You have it coming out this way, then you have it come this way, rear flank downdraft, all those things. And I'm like, oh, are you sure we're going to? And then people are slowing down, so we got, you know, what are you doing? Keep going. Get out of the, you know, don't yeah. stop. What the heck are you doing? So we're trying. Well, then it says, I look down at my phone, and it says six miles. And it takes us back this way to where I'm like, I can't go that way. What are we? What? So I'm like, oh, and I'm hauling butt now, you know. Well, then the, the first part of the winds come. They're strong. Mm -hmm. And something, we don't know what it was, hit our windshield and took Isaac's windshield wiper off. So now it's pouring down rain. The storm is right here. Like, if you're looking out, or, I mean, it's the edge of it's right here. Uh -huh. And uh, so then the, <laughs> the edge of it's there. So then we're sitting there like, oh, crap. Well, I don't have a windshield wiper on my side. So I'm going like this. You're looking uh, on his side. Oh, my gosh. And um, I'm like, 
we got to go east. He goes, we got to get east. I go, yeah. So f- I'm like, there should be a road right here. No road, no road. Finally, we get to the road. Well, he didn't say anything at that point, but I, I turn east. So we're going, now this is gravel road. Uh-huh. Okay, so I'm flying 80 some down a gravel road. Stupid, but we're getting out of there, right? Right. Well, what we didn't understand was in Kansas, they don't have just normal gravel roads like you see down by Sherwood. Yeah. They have maintenance roads. Uh, so maintenance roads are about 85% mud or dirt, 15% gravel. Huh. Now think about that when it's yeah. pouring down rain. So I'm fine. I'm fine. Finally, I see a turn that can go back south. I'm like, we got to take it. <laughs> I mean, and it's mud. So I get down in the ditch and I'm flying and we're we're hauling butt and we're doing great. We're not getting stuck because we're halfway in the ditch and it's harder in the ditch than it is up on the, uh-huh. the mud road. Here comes a uh, a uh, bridge, so we have to get back up. We got thirty feet, maybe two wheel drive escape oh sunk. My God. So. We got out of the tornado, but on a tornado, they always tell you, look for that, the little comma shape or the, you know, uh-huh. because the wind is pulling in. Right. So you look for that little hook. You don't want to be right here in that hook. And we were right there. Right so there. basically when I turned east, I'm here going east and that tornado goes right behind us. Uh-huh. Path. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get stuck. And then here comes the. The other part of the tornado, the back side that's sucking all the air this way. Uh-huh. And we're like, uh. So here we are, middle of Kansas. It's dark now. Mm-hmm. There's not a house. There's not a farm. There's there's not a building anywhere. You could see every, after that storm, you could see every star in the sky. Uh, what are we going to do now? How are we going to get out of this? Because there's no one. Right. And luckily, Cassie's one of Cassie's friends. They live up in the Northland. He calls me. He's like, dude, you guys all right? I go, yeah, we're stuck. He goes, you want me to come pick you up? He lives up in Parkville or somewhere up there. Uh-huh. Parkville, Kansas. No, Missouri up there. Oh, okay. South of the airport. Yeah. Oh, and we're, we're way out south of Fort Riley. Yeah. I go, man, that's a long drive. He goes, I'll do it. I'll do it. I go, I don't know. I don't know if you could. I don't. He goes, I got four-wheel drive. I go, I just don't, I don't think it's going to work. I mean, this is mud. Like, you step out and you're stuck. And I mean, uh-huh. even just stepping. And I think your truck's going to be too heavy. We're going to need like a tractor, like, to get us out of this. He goes, well, I know a guy in Fort Riley. Hold on. And I don't know if we were living right that night, but a guy came down in a Jeep from Fort Riley. He didn't want any money. And he... Got in there. He goes, dang, you guys are bad, you know. But he pulled us out somehow, some way. And so we had a stick, not the windshield wiper, but the stick, and we had a windshield wiper. So we we got out and we tied up like a. I think he had. I think Isaac had a uh, uh, towel in there. So we <laughs> tied that on there. <laughs> we still had to go home. Well, the storms are going. No, they're not tornadic, but we still have to drive through the storms to get back to Garden City. Drop me off, and yeah. you know, and so then we hit the the freeway or the the pavement, and it's like, <laughs> you know, the oh, over. it was all caked in there, and but that was that was a time where Isaac and I both looked at it at that point when that happened, right right when we were stuck in that mud, we're like, we're never doing this again because literally we thought we were gone. I mean, we were, uh, we should have been. How that didn't suck us up and go, we have no idea. Huh. Um, now, later on that night, I'm like, all right, I'm good. I can go. <laughs> but I just go, I'm not doing it again. I'm, that, I mean, it scared us. Right. And, uh, and to this day, when you watch the video, like, I get, I can't, I can't watch the video. Because I, even though I know, it was one of those things where, how did we make that mistake? Uh-huh. Like, We've been great. But then I, I also got to tell myself, what well, wasn't just us. Right. It was nine or ten other probably professionals, at least half of them, that do this on the daily. 
they got caught too, you know. So <laughs> you talk about crap in your pants. Yeah, I mean, that <laughs> thing. That thing is right on. And it, and the thing about it was, it wasn't dark yet. But when when those types of storms come through, it turns pitch black. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's dark. And oh my, we'll we'll, we'll never get that close again. Did, uh, isn't it when like a tornado is coming? Isn't it turn like green outside? That's how you really know. It can. Do you um, know why? A lot of times, what what. And, and I don't know the professional talk to this, but a lot of times what you're seeing is I think what people are seeing is that where the hail is starting to oh, form. Oh, yeah. If you look at a storm, so you don't ever want to be on the north side of the tornado if there's a tornado mm-hmm. because that's where all the hail is at. But if you ever look at that and you see like a different color, mm-hmm. like a turquoise or you know maybe a greenish color or whatever, that's where the hail's at. So... Yeah, I mean, there's times where it does look a little different. Right. Um, but air pressure, too. Oh, you can okay. start feeling it. Gotcha. I used to live out there. Um, oh, you know we're the back road in the Garden City there, 315? Yeah. yeah. So if you go left and go back up in that subdivision. Yeah. We used to live up in there. Okay. When I was in high school. And a little EF0 came through. And I remember it plain as day because the air pressure, my dad came and got me up. And we're looking out the back door, of course, and we it's sad. We had rabbits, uh-huh. and the rabbit cage is going. Uh-huh. And, uh, but when we were walking down, we we're like, oh, crap. So, but when we we're walking down the stairs, you could see the walls going like this because it was sucking that air pressure. Yeah. Air pre- and it popped. So when air pressure, you can tell a lot by the air pressure. That's crazy. Huh. We had a little, I don't remember how long. It was 2020, actually. Cause I just bought my in May. Tr- yes, uh-huh. with a micro. Is it a micro burst in Garden that City? That was a that one derecho storm thing or whatever they call it. A what? A derecho or what? Are you talking it, about the one storm that came? It was in Garden hit, City. Hit Sherwood and all that. Yeah. That so flips, there's another flips video on there that Isaac's driving to Garden City through really? that by Sherwood where it ripped up. But yeah, it was this massive wall. So me and my uncle Ryan, we were in. Um, You're talking about that big wind burst, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that flips semis. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. yeah. I, I remember that storm. That was mm-hmm. terrible. So. Me and my uncle were working in, uh, in uh, what was it, Adrian, and we knew there's gonna be storms. And I bought, I bought this truck. I've been, this guy. <laughs> so anyway, me. we'll talk about storms. Really? I bought this truck the day before, and I was so excited. And then I get a notification, tornado watch. All right, cool. We're in Adrian, and then I'm, we're putting this, oh shoot, a shower with epoxy, mm-hmm. and I'm like, Ryan, does it look? kind of green outside yeah it's it's something that happens when there's tornadoes and i'm like i'm 18 and i'm just like what and he goes yeah there's and then it starts hailing i'm like my new truck i just bought a new truck uh-huh. i'm super excited and then like we're freaking out and then like lights start flickering walls are shaking mm-hmm. and i'm like what is going on and then we finished this we finished what we could for the day yeah pouring rain hop in the truck go back home trees everywhere yeah all the ditches are filled up mm-hmm. And, like, no power for, like, I think we didn't have power for a day. Yeah. It was pretty bad. And then, so I thought it was a microburst. Yeah. It, I mean, it, yes and no is, is more, I think they called it a, I think it's called a derecho or something like that. But it's basically a wall of wind just plowing Pushes through. through. Wow. And Isaac was actually on his way up to get me. And I ended up saying, hey, I'm staying at my house because I live there north of town. Uh-huh. And we were on the northern side of it. So we got, I had like uh, those Bradford pear trees. Uh-huh. Yeah. Them things, I could hear them snapping and yeah. all that. I'm like, because I got to be the one cleaning that up. But we were, we made a decision at that point, are we going to stay and help these people like clean up or everybody's good, okay, because he's on the fire department right. too. Um, no, we headed down, I mean, we went down and. We went chasing still, but we, we were going to go down B and head over to uh, Archie to go down uh, yeah. 49. But, ha- you know, there was a big old tree, so we had to take a deep. You know, it's just, it was crazy how bad that was. It was so weird. And then yeah. I'm, another time where we actually, this wasn't actually a microburst because they thought it was going to be a tornado. We were at Bucksaw, mm-hmm. the re- resort, whatever it's called. Yeah. And we were down there for the lake weekend, and uh, this big old hailstorm comes through. And it's a funny thing is the same thing. My dad just bought this brand new truck and it got like, he had to get a brand new roof, Mm -hmm. hood, everything, repainted everything. Anyway, so we go into the basement of the pool house 
and we come up. The marina is, I kid you not, on in the parking lot. Yeah. The whole dock was twisted, and like all of our boats were out there still. The marina, like all, there's like three, you know what it looks like, yeah. right? There's, there's like three docks. They're all like twisted, and if you're walking on it, it's all like this. So we had to give it a bunch of time before they cleared it out. But like after that, moment, I'm like, gosh, I wish I could have saw that happen. Yeah. Like, I don't like want damage because I knew everyone was safe. Like, everyone that was there was in that basement. But it was like, you know, like, like it made me not scared of storms after that. Because I'm like, that's just so well, cool. The, so, the thing about, like, daytime storms don't scare me. Right. Like, I have no, I'm not scared of anything. Um, nighttime storms kind of get, un, I mean, because with our technology that we do have, I can, like, like the other day, for instance, I was sitting at home. Uh, we had just moved to a different house. Well, the house that we were in had a basement. Mm-hmm. Well, Cassie and the two girls were at Walmart. And I'm cleaning. I'm, I'm trying to stack stuff in our new house because we don't have a basement in this house mm-hmm. uh, so that Cassie can pull her car in. And all of a sudden, my phone starts blowing up tornado warning. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, I'm looking at It's not doing anything, you know? And I didn't know it was supposed to do this, so... I immediately called Cassie. I'm like, hey, where are you at? She's like, well, we just got in the car. We're heading home. I'm like, go to the other house because we still have the other house under our name. You know, uh, We were renting it. And I said, go to the other house, get in, pull the car into the garage, and get in the basement. She goes, what? I go, tornado warning. Just do it. And so she gets over there, and I call Isaac. Okay, where's it at? Where? He goes, hold on. You know, if you don't know my brother, he goes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so he gets up, and he goes, Dude, it's over you. It's right over you right now. I'm like, well, it's still. He goes, it's not. It's not on the ground, but it, it's the rotation is right over you. It's kind of broad, but it's right over you. So, <laughs> I don't have a basement. What am mm-hmm. I gonna do? So what I did because our entryway is kind of all brick. Mm-hmm. So I just sat out on the front porch looking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, why not? Midwestern. You know, I. Where else am I gonna go? Right. right. I mean, if it's gonna suck me up, it's gonna suck me up. He goes, here in about a minute or 30 seconds to a minute, you're going to feel it'll be the the back end of it, and it, it's going to get really windy. And he goes, it should be on the other side. There's a highway called uh, uh, 160 and 14's a highway down there. And he goes, it should be on the other side of 160 now. Here it comes. <sighs> about that time, I mean, the wind's blowing hard. I see my trash can going. I'm like, holy crap. I'm just out there watching. <laughs> he goes, you're fine. The tornado's past. And, you know, if it's going to do anything, it's past you. But that technology, being able to know, okay, if there is a tornado, it is right here. Mm-hmm. Even though scary. this huge storm looks scary and all that stuff, the tornado is going to be right, right here. There. You know, so that helps a little bit because you can now again, you don't want to be in the hail, but yeah. you can tell exactly pretty close to where that tornado is at. It's crazy that he was like able, to like, hey, in here thirty seconds, you're gonna feel this. Yeah, I mean, and then he he, knows. he was just kind of banking off of. How you know how fast the storm? Right. Probably thirty seconds to a minute. You're gonna feel it. Sure enough. So, I I remember awesome. that uh, that <clears throat> that micro burst back in the May of 2020. I was at my house. I was just about to go out and go do something because COVID. We didn't have school, no, so I was yeah. just gonna go do something somewhere. And I was like, oh man, there's a big storms coming. Like it's super dark out. Yeah, I knew something bad was gonna like a lot of ha- rain or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I just stayed back for. I was going to wait an hour, let it pass, whatever, then go hit the road and go do something. And I just remember I was just sitting on the front porch. It's super calm air. The next thing I know, out, I live out on a farm, and we have hay fields everywhere. All I see at the top of this hill, all the, all this tall grass just lay down. Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> so I would go inside. I'm looking out the window, and it blew through us. Tree branches snapped. Mm-hmm. My neighbor up on the hill... Uh, they had a piece of uh, tin go right through their house, Ooh. put a huge hole, like took out their whole wall. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. That was that was some crazy stuff. It it gets crazy up there. I know um, you guys probably weren't even born, but maybe so. You might have been four or five. But a tornado went up by my grandpa's property, and. Uh, Essentially, he had a heart attack during it. Didn't know. Okay. I mean, he thought he was drunk. Well, he has a double wide. You know, my mom lives out there now fixing it up. But mm-hmm. um, So, two things with this tornado. One, it took a boat. And I'm this. no one will ever believe this story. 
and it's not like a big boat. It was just a little like a, a uh, John boat. Yeah, um, uh, a, it was a guy from Butler. So the storm came from Butler area, picked that boat up, and sat it into a pond down the road from us. Huh. That's crazy. It was in a pond. That same tornado took a corn cob and stuck it through, you know, where like the trim starts on a door, yeah. front door. Stuck right, a corn cob stuck right through the trim. Whoa. Um, yeah. <laughs> That'd be quite the surprise when you got home. Right, Luke? <laughs> I got a boat and a corn cob. Let's go. <laughs> and the only reason they figured out that that boat it was registered to a guy from Butler. And, huh. sure, and he lost his boat. So, yeah. That's nuts. crazy. It is nuts. I seen this uh, one, this crazy uh, the storm chaser. It was pitch dark. I was raining its ass off, and him and his buddies. It was like a blurry recording, and it's super dark out. They're talking because they're, they're lost at this point. It's super dark out. They don't know where they're at, and it's lightning, thunder's going off like crazy. Next thing, a, a lightning lightning bolt hits the ground and it lights up the sky, and the tornado is just right in front of them. And that oh you know, that video that video gives me chills. I don't know why. It the crap out of me. It just just watching it because they're like after the lightning struck and it lit up the skies and they just see the huge ass tornado. It, it wasn't mm-hmm. like moving because it was coming right at them. Right. It looked like it was moving. And then they like they the video ends after that. Yeah, they get out. They got out of there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're going. That's just crazy. Yep. Wow. All right, everyone. Well, that was five real questions, five real answers with. Two hosts and a former teacher. Is that what you called it? Yeah. All right. <laughs> and now we'll get into our uh, second favorite, which is the hypothetical question of the week. And Travis made this one, so he gets to read it to you. <clears throat> All right, Shrock. Interesting. Yeah, it is. If we had a F5 tornado coming straight for your home, what would be your next move for safety? First, how much time? Uh, you're... It's a mile away. Mile away. So that's I mean, it's pretty close in tornado yeah, standards. Yeah, right? that's that's pretty close. Um, well, I I would hope that I'd have some type of shelter. There's no driving like you. It's 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 that's right what there. I'm saying. I yeah. hope I'd have. I you either get a you know you get one of them shelters that hopefully you get underground somehow. Uh-huh. Um, if not, you go to the you know the most inner part of your house and pray that it doesn't take a direct hit. Um, if it's that big of a tornado. You, you better be covered. Um, it's scary. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, those if it's an F5, I mean, those winds are howling well above any wind that you've ever been through. And it's – the hard thing with the tornado is the wind will be – I mean, you it's going to take stuff, but it's the debris. Yeah. All the crap that that tornado is picking up, <laughs> where's it going? Right. You know, and – uh, but man, that's. I would hope that I would uh, have a little bit more than a mile away. Uh, <laughs> that's why it's hypothetical. Yeah. <laughs> um, if if it so, if I had more time, let's say it, you know, give or take five to twenty minutes, whatever. Yeah. Um, if it truly is that big of a tornado, I'm getting out of there. I'm not staying. We're taking whatever we can, and we're booking. Um, and uh, I don't want to be a part of that. No. Right. Um, but. It'd be interesting. Do you think you have a chance of survival if you got in a car with a E five like just following you? Following us? Yeah, like coming. Like you're trying, come, to, go like you're trying to go get away from it, but it's yeah. just coming right at you. It, uh, with the again, winds being again, you would have to uh, you depend on where the path. I mean, if you had a, and that's one thing that you know we try to do when we're going out um, is find roads. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Isaac went out by himself the first of this year. And he saw a tornado, but he stayed after dark because he knew there was nothing for him down south of him coming his way. And he knew the road. He had a good exit Mm -hmm. escape. Um, So you have to understand what your road situation's like, too. Uh, Because, like you mentioned this a minute ago, that lightning, and it's looking right at you, and it's not moving. You don't see, you you know, um, depending on how fast it's going, no road is perfectly straight. Yeah. So many so turns. So you have to figure out. So would you have a chance? Yeah, you have a chance as long as you knew your road outlets. Um, but if it was something where I have no idea where I'm going, it could turn you back around. Um, mm-hmm. No, no. You, you don't want to be stuck in a car 
mm-hmm. with that thing hitting you. No. Um, is that the worst thing to do, to be, like, in a vehicle? Well, they tell you to go into a ditch if you're in a car. They say yeah. pull over and lay in a ditch. Uh, get out of the car? And lay in a ditch. In a, because yeah. you think about that, that car gets picked up. Yeah. You know? So <laughs> if it gets picked up, at some point it's going to land. Yeah. You pray that it, I guess, lands in a water puddle or something, you know what I mean? A pond. Right. Um, and then the, yeah. Because it's going to explode when it lands. Yeah. I mean, it's got gasoline in it. Uh, but, you know, they, I don't know if you ever watch those videos where the people hit underneath the bridges. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm. That's not smart to do. Um, that's not? The, in theory, no, because that's a tunnel. That becomes a tunnel, you know? Oh. And, and just like today, you know, I took my girl to, to Kaufman to watch the Royals, you know, the tunnels out to the... Yeah. The well, breezeways? The breezeways. I yeah. mean, they're... It was howling. Yeah. Now, you, you went and sat down, hotter than crap. But if you got in that breezeway with that wind blowing, it's a... I mean, it's a tunnel. And you think mm-hmm. about that, all that wind, well, that's going underneath that bridge, and it's sucking everything out. How those... I mean, those people survived. Mm-hmm. Um, and more than likely, you would if you are up and had m- enough room to brace yourself where, yeah. you know, you could hold on and... But... Yeah, it just suck. I mean, it's just another. Man. It's crazy how it all really works crazy. out. <laughs> what would you do, Travis? <sighs> well, let's we'll say what he said. Five, five to twenty minutes. You're pre- you got no preparation. What do you? What do you do? Uh, well, if I didn't have a basement, it's just like that. The stand. You don't have a basement. Okay. Just, I would just. I'd have to get my vehicle and just I book Open it. Open pray. Yeah, I mean, if I. If I didn't have a basement, I'd have no hope. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to sit in a bathtub or anything. No. Well, think, think about if you know this house here. You know, say you want to leave. I mean, you got to get out the the yeah. neighborhood. You got to, you know, That's then true. you got to get out. Well, there's stoplights. So what are these idiots doing out here? And you got to um, watch out for other you know, people trying to leave down and, kind of in the Urix area, mm-hmm. the farm area. Well, now you know, okay, this road goes east, this road goes mm-hmm. south. There's probably not going to be anybody. Hopefully a cow's not out, you know. Mm-hmm. Right. But here you're trying to get through all the neighborhoods, and, mm-hmm. and you can't really go. I mean, you can go fast, but it's not as good. No. Yeah. Oh, what, what about you? What are you What are you doing in this? He'd ride it out. He'd Texas I'd, tornado it, right? Yeah, I'd, I'd get a lawn chair and, and, uh, <laughs> and, a bush and chain. Well, I'm getting there in a lawn chair, chain myself up to something sturdy, lock it in, and get a some bush lights and watch it happen. I'm <laughs> just hoping for it now. I'll be like a fat kite. <laughs> the tornado will pull me. Well, if you ever watch the first Twister, they just tied themselves onto those pipes that go down the ground. So you, you always see that every time a tornado goes through, the toilet's still there. So I was thinking of that Toby Keith video. Grab a six pack in a lawn chair, <laughs> and he's chaining himself down to the ground. Toby Keith, no. rest Pepper, in peace. Rest in peace. Yep. No, but uh, I, I don't know. I mean, if it isn't the house I'm in now, our safe spot is under our stairs, the before my room, you know. Yeah. The, the closet under the stairs. So I mean, I guess just get down. If I can't leave, I mean, I I mean my Mustang's pretty fast, so I'm getting out of that no matter <laughs> yeah, what. Yeah, so, you'd be fine. If someone's parked behind me, I'm screwed. But. Um, no, I'd probably either hop in the car or just get under the stairs with a bunch of soft stuff. And my grandma always told me to bring a whistle with me. So if you are trapped under a house, that's just a good blow the whistle. whistle. Put like a if you have a twin size mattress, you know, something like that, little closet area. Right. Bring that in and put it on top of you guys. Right. Something's gonna fall on you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And and that's the hard thing with basements. Now, if, if we lived out here uh, where we were living, um, our front porch was concrete yeah and then underneath it was a i mean the walls were like this thick yeah the tornado is awesome you know and and so when we would have a tornado yeah we had a walkout basement but we go in there because literally the only thing that could happen in that is obviously you have the door so the fear of getting sucked out yeah. with that big of a tornado would be the only thing that you really have to worry about right. because the walls i mean were thick concrete underneath the ground concrete pat or porch on top so that was probably the best case scenario to ever have mm-hmm. um but still you just never know no it's it's <laughs> a big tornado yeah that's huge we need a we need to do a lunch table collab with the nader boys and go on and find us a tornado yeah. i really want to see a tornado. You, you guys you can come with us anytime i know you guys work but that's and so another thing with me switching 
careers into insurance world is I am blessed that I can take off if I need to or yeah. if I want to. Right. right? I um, do my job. I go to the office pretty much every day. Um, but I can, like Tuesday, we may go out. We mm-hmm. may be out and about Tuesday. We'll see how everything goes. But Tuesday could be an opportunity. So I'm, I'll tell my, my team, hey, I'm going out chasing today. I'll, I'll, be, I'll see you tomorrow, you know. And, <laughs> but it's, it's, you know, and maybe that's because I work with my uncle too a little bit. Right. Yeah. But um, it's not, I have to clock in at 8, clock out at 5. Yeah. I don't ever have to do that ever again. The only time that we ever really have to be in the office is what they call open enrollment time. And we have to be there. I mean, pretty much 12 hours a day, right. okay. if not more, because we have over a 1,000, almost 1,200 clients right now oh. that we reach out to every single one of them. That's crazy. Oh, right? Yeah. And we have about from October 15th to uh, December, I th- what was that, December, s- middle of December for Medicare, and then we have from November 1 to the middle of December for individual health care uh, so, but we're reaching you know so but that's not like peak season either though right so like, no it's no not like anything busy the so only it's... the only the, the hard part with that is um would be any type of sports you know yeah right? but I, again he lets me leave when i need to leave yeah. right he, he awesome. lets me go um and he'll he'll let me do the the chasing too so that's awesome um, that's another blessing that we have you know like yeah. i can go do something that i enjoy doing mm-hmm. And not worrying about okay, well, I don't get off till three thirty, or I don't get off till five. I can't do anything till that. Um, mm-hmm. That's so crazy. Yeah. So like Friday, I left early, and I took actually a log up to have a mantle made, you know. But nice. <laughs> and then went to Royals game, right? <laughs> huh. So that's that's a that's a privilege too. So. That's awesome. Well. We want to thank you for coming on again. This was awesome. Yes. I'm glad we made it work. We had a really busy day. It today. was busy. Very busy. But again, thank you for coming on and telling us all those stories. Absolutely. Travis, where can everyone find us at? You can find us at the lunch table underscore podcast 24. You can uh, find that on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Spotify, Facebook. And Facebook. Yep. And then find the Nader Boys. Where are you guys on? We we have a Facebook account, Nader Boys, and uh, YouTube. Um, you can follow us either one. Uh, we also team up with Subby's Weather Talk, and he has, I mean, he has four or five of them. You can find that anywhere. So Yeah, we'll, we'll but, put them all right here for yeah. you guys to go well, check actually, out. We usually we usually go live, you know, when we're yeah. out. So if you have us on Facebook or whatever, mm-hmm. you can watch wherever you're at. And, and uh, uh, I mean, maybe you guys can go with us someday yeah that'd be crazy <laughs> whenever you're ready <laughs> so uh make sure you guys follow and subscribe to the nader boys you can find them on facebook and youtube at nader boys dash xd6 tg on you find YouTube. those that's that's their channel oh that's where you gotta find <laughs> them i did my research all right good job i was on it today you, See, you really he, did it yeah I trust him a little bit this more. This is one now. of his best ones. This, yeah. is, this is one of his best ones. He didn't say any weird words. <laughs> yeah. Temptations. Yeah, temptation. Had to pee one time, but that's all right. That's all right. Yeah, he was well behaved. Yeah. He gets a treat after this. He parked his car in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everyone. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of the Lunch Table Podcast. And we will see you next week. Well, lunch, you don't even need me. I'll watch you walk away. The stars are falling right in place. I'll watch you walk away. You stole my heart from inside of me.